My name is Dr. Martin Jaffa, and since 2010 I have been independently researching the relationship between salmon farming and wild salmon and sea trout. There is a long-standing view that salmon farms are to blame for the decline of wild fish stocks along Scotland's northwest coast, but could there be another explanation? This presentation looks specifically at the decline of the world-renowned Loch Marie sea trout fishery. The campaigning charity Salmon and Trout Conservation Scotland claim on their website that sea trout stocks in Loch Marie collapsed in 1988, one year after the start of salmon farming in adjacent Loch U. I have searched the pages of Trout and Salmon magazine in the years from 1988 onwards and have been unable to find any mention of a collapse. The angling reports for Loch Marie in the magazine do refer to poor catches, but that is it. A scientific paper written by James Butler and Andy Walker in 2006 first raised the possibility that salmon farming was behind the collapse of sea trout stocks in Loch Marie. This graph is taken from their paper and shows sea trout catches from the Loch Marie Hotel fishery from 1969 to 2001. The bars indicate the catch for each year, whilst the line represents the five-year catch average. You can also see that Butler and Walker have added an arrow to the graph, indicating when the salmon farm was established in Loch U. When I first saw this graph, three questions came to mind. Firstly, Andy Walker was a government scientist and had access to the catch data for the whole of the U district, but yet opted to use catch data from just the hotel fishery. Secondly, catch data has been collected by the government since 1952, yet the graph starts at 1969. And finally, the five-year catch data suggests that catches had peaked around 1979 and had been in decline from then on. This graph is drawn from the official catch data for the U fishery district. From 1969, there are clear similarities to the previous graph, but the definition around 1987 is not so apparent. Also, it can be seen why Butler and Walker chose to start their graph in 1969. Catches of sea trout collapsed completely in 1967 and 68. The explanation is the presence of UDN or ulcerated dermal necrosis, which meant that there was almost no fishing in those years. The five year catch average highlights that the U district sea trout catches were in decline from 1952, but they also showed a resurgence during the 1970s before again falling into decline. The subsequent increase in catches is attributed to new rigorous policing of illegal netting in Loch U. For anyone who doesn't know the geography, Loch U is a sea loch in the northwest highlands south of Ullapool. The loch is about 15 kilometres long with an island near the centre. Loch Marie is a freshwater loch which is about 20 kilometres in length and which was once renowned for its sea trout fishery. Loch Marie is connected to Loch U by the River U, which is about 5 kilometres long and enters the loch at Pool U. The whole fishery is sometimes known as the U system. In 1987, Marine Harvest established a farm near the west bank of Loch U at Nast. The farm was located about four kilometres from Pool U. I am told that this is a picture of the original farm, although I'm not so sure. Certainly the Loch U farm looked very similar. Although references are always made to a salmon farm in Loch U, Butler and Walker actually refer to a second farm in the loch but this was registered at a later date than the farm at Nast. Around 2015, Salmon and Trout Conservation commissioned Andy Walker to write an updated report about the collapse of the Loch Marie sea trout fishery. His conclusion was that it is highly likely that the introduction of salmon farming in Loch U in 1987 was a major cause in the collapse of sea trout in Loch Marie. As we have seen, 1987 is highlighted as the year that salmon farming began in Loch U. This is the record from the original Loch U farm site as published by the Scottish Environmental Protection Agency. The company is listed by its current name of Maui rather than Marine Harvest as when the farm was established. The most important point from this record is the date that this site was first registered, 5th of November 1987 or bonfire night.
Smolts would typically be stocked out in the spring months, so although the farm was established in 1987, no fish would have been present on the site that year. The first fish to be transferred to the farm would have been in 1988, the year that Loch Marie sea trout fishery was supposed to have collapsed. These fish would have been lice free and they would have only become infected, if at all, once adult wild salmon started to return to the loch in the summer of 1988. The usual way to ascertain whether salmon farms are having any impact on wild fish is to sample for sea trout using a seine net. This method is not 100% effective as most healthy fish are adept at escaping seine nets, so the sample may not be representative of the whole population. This graph is from a study by Loch Harbour Fisheries Trust in which they sampled sea trout in the loch near Fort William. They found that in the first year of operations when farms are stocked with smolts, then sea trout infestations are low. In the second year, when the fish on the farm are much larger, then sea trout samples appear to have a higher sea lice infestation. If sea trout stocks in Loch Marie did collapse in 1988, it is highly unlikely it was due to sea lice infestation emanating from the salmon farm. One aspect of parasites that is never discussed by those who blame salmon farms on the disappearance of wild fish from the West Coast Aquaculture Zone is that all parasites, including sea lice, are not distributed as a standard normal distribution. If they were normally distributed, then it would mean that in any population of sea trout, small numbers of fish would have a few lice, small numbers of fish would have large numbers of lice, and the bulk of the population would have a spread from low to high with a peak in the middle. However, this is not how parasites are distributed. Parasites follow an aggregated distribution, which is illustrated by this generalised graph. Using the example of sea trout, the majority of fish in a stock would have one or less sea lice, whilst just a few would be highly infested. These would typically be the weak or sick fish which succumb readily to secondary lice infestations. These are also the fish that are most likely to be caught during sampling. This graph is taken from a Norwegian scientific paper in which the authors sampled a whole population of sea trout. As you can see, the graph clearly illustrates the aggregated distribution of sea lice on the fish. There are a large number of fish which hardly show any infestation. By comparison, the number of fish with high loads of sea lice is very low. Butler and Walker suggest that the Loch Marie sea trout fishery collapsed only after the arrival of salmon farm into the loch in 1987. So what has caused the collapse of sea trout catches from the River Nith? Every river is very different in terms of its geography, its nature and its stocks, but there is a clear similarity in the sea trout decline for both the U and the Nith. This map of Scotland shows the area of the northwest highlands and islands that has been named the aquaculture zone. This is the area in red. The arrow at the top of the map shows the location of the U system. The arrow at the bottom of the map shows the location of the River Nith. While sea trout migrate out to sea, unlike salmon, they remain in the vicinity of their local river. This means that sea trout from the River Nith are unlikely to swim north into the aquaculture zone and thus encounter infectious sea lice. The third arrow relates to the next graph and points to the west coast divide between salmon farming areas and areas devoid of salmon farms. This graph shows the decline of sea trout catches from rivers in the aquaculture zone in blue. The graph also shows sea trout catches from the southwestern coast, which includes the River Nith in green. What is clearly apparent is the almost parallel decline of sea trout catches both north and south of the River Clyde. The presence of sea lice from salmon farms does not explain why sea trout catches have declined in southwest Scotland. The parallel decline of catches from both areas suggests a similar cause. The graph also poses the question why sea trout catches from the rivers in the aquaculture zone were in decline long before salmon farming became established on the west coast. A similar decline is also seen for catches from the southwestern rivers. The highlighted part of the graph is the section that relates to the time when the Loch Marie sea trout fishery supposedly collapsed. It is only a minor portion of a much more significant longer term decline. For comparison, this graph shows the total sea trout catch for all of Scotland, including the north and east coasts. 
I've also included the official graph drawn by Marine Scotland Science for the same period. This is a point of reference to establish the validity of the data I've used. These graphs also show that sea trout catches are in long-term decline across all of Scotland. This graph compares the decline of sea trout catches from the aquaculture zone in blue with sea trout catches from all of Scotland in orange. Both are in decline, but the rate of decline is greater in the aquaculture zone. This is not surprising given the size of the reservoir of fish in the larger East Coast rivers. In the year 2000, the total sea trout catch from the whole of the aquaculture zone was 6,503, whilst the River Dee and the River Spey landed 7,000 fish between them alone. This graph compares the total Scottish sea trout catch in orange with that from the southwest of Scotland in green. The rate of decline for the southwest is also greater than the decline for the whole of Scotland. Again, this is due to the much larger size of the East Coast rivers. As highlighted at the start of this presentation, Salmon and Trout Conservation Scotland stated that sea trout stocks in Loch Marie collapsed in 1988. I want to look at their claim in more detail by comparing what happened to Loch Marie with what happened to another loch further up the northwest coast. This is Loch Stack. The scientific symposium was held at the Marine Research Laboratory near Oban in June 1987. That was nearly five months before the farm in Loch Hugh was even registered, let alone producing any salmon. I would like to read a section of a paper presented by Mr. M. J. Picken to the symposium. The paper states, the Northwest has shown a steady decline in sea trout with the highest catches in the middle of the 1950s. The region can be examined with reference to different river systems. For example, the name of Loch Stack was historically a password for excellence in sea trout circles. Before 1952, it was fished only by a few members of the proprietor's family. However, Mr. A. Young writing in the annual report of the Scottish Fisheries Board in 1885 mentions that Loch Stack was Scotland's premier loch for sea trout in terms of number and size. Unfortunately, its reputation has been eroded by a steady decline in catches from 1960 to 1965 and again in the late 1970s. Mr. Picken continues, by contrast, the River U Loch Marie catches show a steady decline from 1952 to the early 1960s, with a peak in the late 1960s, followed by a decline until 1973. Then there was a steady increase throughout the 1970s, followed after that by a decline to the general pre-1970s levels. This is a picture of the cover of the late Bruce Anderson's book, Rivers and Lochs of Scotland, in which he provides a comprehensive guide to every sea trout and salmon fishing in the country. This is the first edition, published in 1997, a decade after the Loch Marie sea trout fishery supposedly collapsed. The entry for Loch Marie states, In its glory days, Loch Marie boats used to catch upwards of 1,500 sea trout each season, but in recent years this has fallen at times to less than 50. Many anglers believe this is due to sea lice infestation from Crown Estate licensed salmon farm cages. The entry for Loch Stack states, one of Scotland's most beautiful sea trout fisheries, sadly suffering from the national decline in numbers of fish. In August 1985, a new salmon farm was registered in Loch Laxford. That is two years before this farm opened in Loch U. Like Loch Marie, Loch Stack is connected to a sea loch by a short river, the River Laxford. The river empties into the sea loch of the same name. The farm is located near the southern shore of the loch, near one of its several islands. Isn't it rather strange that Bruce Sanderson highlighted that the decline of the Loch Marie sea trout is blamed on salmon farming, yet the decline of Loch Stack sea trout fishery is not. Salmon farms opened in both sea lochs at very similar times, yet only one is cited as the cause of declining sea trout catches. Butler and Walker claimed that the only major change to affect Loch U during the 1980s was the arrival of salmon farming. However, a more significant change was the removal of the three mile fishing limit in 1984, which allowed trawlers to fish inshore waters, including the west coast sea lochs like Loch U.
Stocks of marine demersal species such as cod, whiting and sathe all collapsed after the new legislation was introduced to remove the three mile fishing limit in 1984. The graph shows the collapse of these species plotted against the collapse of Loch Marie sea trout. This is expressed as a statistical function. The similarity between the collapse of each species is remarkable. Sea trout catches have been in decline across the west coast as well as all of Scotland for decades. For local reasons, Loch Marie seems to have bucked this trend during the 1970s, but finally declined like other sea trout fisheries such as Loch Stack when the three mile fishing limit was removed in 1984. However, since the late 1980s, fishing for sea trout has continued in Loch Marie, although the poor catches have deterred some anglers, so the loch has only been lightly fished. Despite this, a total of 11,088 fish have been caught, with over half not been returned. The evidence that salmon farming is to blame for the decline of sea trout catches is largely circumstantial. It just happens that the most noticeable declines have coincided with the growth of the salmon farming industry in Scotland. Salmon and Trout Conservation Scotland argue that if the salmon farm in Loch Hugh is removed, sea trout stocks in Loch Marie will recover. The salmon farming company that runs the Loch Hugh farm has now announced that for commercial reasons, they will close the farm in 2020. Will we see a resurgence in sea trout in Loch Marie? Undoubtedly, catches will increase in the short term because the fishery has been so lightly fished for so many years. Only time will tell whether a commercial fishery can be sustained year on year. The evidence suggests not, and that sea trout will never be as common as they used to be in Loch Marie's heyday. The reality is that a resurgent Loch Marie sea trout fishery is just wishful thinking. Thank you very much for listening.